Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. The mayor of the Wachi district of Warsaw, who has been closely associated with the opposition civic platform party for many years, Arta W, and the Turkish developer, Sabri B, have been arrested for corruption and placed on remand for three months. This decision was issued today by the district court for the Warsaw Mokotov area. According to investigative journalists, the decision may only be the tip of the iceberg. The prosecutor's office accuses the former civic platform politician of accepting financial benefits from Turkish businessman Sabri B, a former owner of the Pogonstetin football club. Both suspects refused to explain themselves and pleaded not guilty. This week, the Central Anti-Corruption Bureau searched the mayor's office as well as Sabri B's headquarters and secured possible evidence in the case. It's not a secret that these are not the only investments related to Opushanka Street, which was discussed when we were talking about Sabri B, the man who was supposed to throw this famous bribe out of the window of Alto W's car. But we're talking about other investments. We're also talking about the Warsaw developer who rented a luxury car to the mayor of the Warsaw Walker district. It seems that this issue will probably be the second part, but will it be the last one? I doubt it. There are a lot of connections that lead to many local government officials thanks to Auto W. According to the editor-in-chief of Televisa Republika Dorota Kania, R2W held senior positions thanks to the Civic Platform Party in the past. In 2011, he managed the state-owned company Nafto, but he was also the deputy mayor of Bilane and Vola before he became the mayor of Włochy. After the information about Artur W's detention became public, quite a lot of panic took control of the Civic Platform Party. They wanted to get rid of Artur W very quickly and cut themselves off from him. Why? Because this case may be the beginning of a gigantic scandal. Sabri B was the chairman of the Pogon Szczecin Football Club from 1999 to 2002. His misunderstandings with the city authorities caused the sponsor's withdrawal from the club in 2002. This businessman came to Szczecin to build a shopping center. His idea was to take over the Pogon Szczecin football club, but in fact he wanted to take over 18 acres of land on Twardowski Street in Szczecin. He wanted to build a huge shopping center. The money from the center was supposed to finance the football club, but this didn't happen because the city didn't get along with Sabri B. The Central Anti-Corruption Bureau called the man red-handed on Tuesday after Sabri B gave money to the mayor, Arthur W. According to the bureau, R2W took 200,000 zloty from a well-known developer and tried to hide the cash in a family-owned garage. The bureau also said that in exchange for bribes, the mayor of Włochy issued administrative decisions favorable to the developer. The Advocate General at the European Court of Justice, Eleanor Sharpston, said today that Poland, the Czech Republic and Hungary had violated European Union regulations by refusing to take part in the migrant relocation program in 2015. The Advocate General's opinion may play a vital role in the verdict of the court to be given in a few months, even though the European Union withdrew from the regional relocation programme in 2017. In 2015, Poland refused to take part in the migrant relocation program, fearing for the safety of its citizens as a result of uncontrolled immigration. According to the European Commission, which filed a lawsuit against Poland, Hungary and Czech Republic in the European Court of Justice, the three countries not only broke the law but also violated the EU rule of unity. However, a spokesman for the Polish government said that Poland's refusal has a legal basis in the treaty on the functioning of the European Union, which states that the internal affairs and matters of public security are decided on by the individual member states. It's not as though Poland hasn't shown any solidarity, it's actually the opposite. We welcomed many political refugees who had to run to our country in fear of their lives and well-being. This wasn't taken into account by the court's advocate general. Polish government officials stress that almost none of the EU member states fulfilled their obligation to meet the relocation quotas entirely and said that the lawsuit against only Poland, Hungary and Czech Republic is yet further proof of unequal treatment by the EU. Today is the 94th anniversary of the establishing of Warsaw's Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. The traditional ceremony to commemorate the establishment of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is to lay flowers at the memorial plaque dedicated to Jadwiga Zarogwiec, 
the symbolic mother of the unknown soldier and defender of Lvov, who died 101 years ago and is buried at the tomb. Łączy nas dzisiaj pamięć i wdzięczność wobec Today we are united by historic memory and indebtedness to the dozens of generations of Polish soldiers and knights. They were always ready to face the enemy and fight for the motherland. We bow our heads low as a gesture of homage to those who had always the courage to defend Poland. We bow our heads low to the unknown soldier buried here 101 years ago, a defender of Lviv in the year 1918. His grave, used as a symbol for all unknown soldiers killed in action while defending the honor and independence of our Republic of Poland. We remember today those soldiers from Cedynia, knights from Płowce, Grunwald from Kirchholm, Kuszyn and Olsza, and those who throughout almost one and a half centuries were fighting for Poland to return to independent statehood, to be back on the map. Starting from the Basque Confederation, soldiers of General Tadeusz Kościuszko, fighters in the November and January uprisings of 1830 and 1864, Piłsudski's legions, soldiers of the Polish Fighters' Organization, and those who defended Poland in 1920. We remember all those soldiers of the Second World War, September 1939 campaign, the underground Home Army, and all those fighting on all fronts in 1945. They have been proving that there is no free Europe, no free world, without a free Poland. The president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, today met NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg in Kiev. The two leaders were cautiously optimistic about the withdrawal of troops from the front line separating the Ukrainian army and Russian-backed separatists in Donbass in eastern Ukraine, which began this week. The Ukrainian army and Russian-backed rebel forces began a phased troop withdrawal in the eastern town of Zolota this week, part of a series of measures to halt a conflict that has killed more than 13,000 people in the last five years. The Ukrainian president stated that Ukraine plans to start a withdrawal from the town of Petrivske, provided there are no ceasefire violations in the area. If the situation is secure in Petrivske for the week, as you know, there must be seven days of ceasefire. Then we will have to start withdrawal in Petrivske on November 4th, if I'm not mistaken. That is why I see no doubt that the meeting in the Normandy format will take place if all parties are committed to it and want to meet in the Normandy format, because the result is an agreement on the end of the war. Jens Stoltenberg earlier visited the city of Odessa, where he stated that NATO hopes that the troop withdrawals are the start of a peaceful resolution to the war. We welcome all uh, efforts to uh, reduce tensions, to uh, withdraw forces and to make sure that we have a peaceful resolution to the conflict in eastern Ukraine. But of course NATO also uh, 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 states very clearly that Russia has a special responsibility to implement the Minsk agreements and that they must withdraw all the troops, all their officers from eastern Ukraine and stop destabilizing eastern Ukraine. Zelensky's decision to start withdrawing troops from the front is, however, seen as treason by some Ukrainians who gathered in Kiev to protest against the move. <laughs> I am here today for Ukraine, to remain Ukraine. I came here today for the sake of my son. I want him to have a country of his own, his own language, his own Ukrainian authority, and for Ukraine to remain worthy and honorable country, not the state Putin would wipe the floor with. Despite some progress being made by the two sides on the issue of the Donbas region, the position on Crimea remain locked. The peninsula was annexed from Ukraine by the Russian Federation after a swift military operation in late February and early March 2014. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather, Poland daily business and more programs. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.